What's up, my name's Sam Matler, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what I call signal-driven decision-making. If you're struggling to take action in life, if you're struggling to make decisions, this is for you. Before we get into it, please like, subscribe, and comment below for the algorithm. I'd love to grow this channel as quickly as possible, and I appreciate your help. Decisive action is the forcing function for getting what you want out of life. You want to grow a business? Decisive action will get you there. You want to have a great relationship with your partner? Decisive action will get you there. You want to buy a house somewhere? Decisive action is going to get you there. There's a quote from my favorite book in the world, Straight Line Leadership, which says, you are rewarded in life for taking effective action, not thinking, trying, or even the appearance of giving it your best shot. The problem that many people have, maybe yourself, is that you don't know which decisive action, which effective action to take. You know decisive action is the only way to move forward, but for whatever reason, you just can't get yourself to make a decision. You can't commit to something. In front of you are multiple options. There are pros and cons to each. All of them are promising. And every day you think through these options, you analyze the potential outcomes, the risks, the roadblocks, and so on and so forth. You project yourself into the future and wonder how you'd feel working on that certain project or business or living in that specific city or being with that particular person. The day passes, you still haven't made a decision. The low level anxiety remains and you repeat the process of thinking, analyzing, wondering, and future projecting. So why is it that you can't make a decision? Well, it comes down to something called maximization, which Barry Schwartz talks about in his book, The Paradox of Choice. When you try and maximize every decision you make, you just don't make any decisions. It leads to inaction. You want to maximize your opportunity. You want to build the business that has the highest chance of success with the lowest effort, you want to enter into a long-term relationship with a person who completely understands you and you love spending every minute with them. You want to move to the perfect city and live in the perfect house. But by doing this, by trying to maximize, you end up overthinking and not taking action at all. Any business idea or business opportunity that comes your way won't be good enough in some way, shape or form. You'll find an excuse to not pursue it because you're trying to maximize. Any guy or girl who enters your life will be missing something and you'll keep looking. You'll never move to any of the new cities or countries you're thinking of moving to because there'll be something, there'll be some drawback that stops you from making that decision. Because again, you're trying to maximize, you're trying to seek perfection. Maximization does not work. It is a recipe for loop-based thinking. You'll be in a constant state of indecision, nothing is good enough and you won't take action and move forward. So why do we maximize? Why do we do this? One reason is that on a fundamental level, we try to maximize because it gives us an excuse to delay action and to not make a decision. When you don't make any decisions, you don't need to take any action. This way you can remain in homeostasis. You can remain in your comfort zone, unchallenged. Of course, you and I know that it's the furthest thing from comfortable. It's depressing, it's anxiety inducing, it's unexciting, it's unfulfilling. But it's what you know and it's what your biology is fighting for to stay still, to stay in balance, to not shake things up. Begin to stay in the comfort zone. If you want to take decisive action, you need to acknowledge this and you need to battle against the pull of homeostasis. You need to feel the fear, the discomfort, and do it anyway. And here's the funny thing about it the only true way to maximize is to take decisive action. You'll never achieve maximization if you don't take any action. And so if you truly want to make the best decisions possible in your life, in your business, in your relationships, you need to take action. This is the only way to achieve anything resembling maximal opportunity. No one starts an eight-figure business at eight figures. No one has an amazing relationship at day one. No one lives in the perfect city until they've built community around them. The best opportunities in your mind require work. They require action. But you already know this. Your problem is not that you're afraid of hard work, though it definitely could be. Like I talked about, that desire for comfort. 
Your problem is that you can't decide. And here's what you need to internalize. Action leads to insight more often than insight leads to action. Action leads to insight more often than insight leads to action. So let's say you want to move to a new city. You have three choices. Each day, you think about these choices passively, not actively. You're on Reddit. You're reading comments from people who live there. You go on YouTube. You watch videos about the city. You imagine what it would be like to live there. But you haven't visited any of these cities yet. Everything you know about them has come from the internet and other people's opinions. You're not going to gain any light bulb moments from continuing down this path of internet research and so on and so forth. The only way you gain the insight you need is to take action, to go and visit the city. And you might say, yeah, well, visiting the city is not the same as living in it. So how will I know the best city to live in? You won't. And that's the point. You don't know the best city to live in. You visit them. And if there isn't enough signal that's telling you this is the right decision, then you need to make a decision anyway, or you stay where you are. The best case is that you move to city A, let's say. After six months, you've fallen in love. You don't even think about the other options because clearly you've made such a great decision. You've committed. You're making the most of it. Life is good. The worst case scenario is that you move to city A and you despise it after six months. It's significantly affecting your quality of life. You made the wrong decision. You know exactly why that is and you know to avoid it in the future. So you move to city B, which is a lot better. In both cases, taking action has led to insight, the insight that you need to make a longer term commitment. So this leads us to signal driven decision making. Nine times out of 10, it's better to just get on with it and make a decision than continue to think and analyze. Obviously, there are times in life where thinking, waiting, pondering are necessary and important. You probably shouldn't marry the person that you've been dating for a week. Slow down. This is not a time to be decisive and fast paced. You probably shouldn't sell your business to the first buyer who comes your way. But when faced with multiple decisions, and especially if you've been contemplating them for a long time and you're in this mode of inaction and procrastination, the best thing you can do is make a commitment and start moving down a single path. But here's the important part. You can't give yourself an easy out. If you decide to build a new business, you can't just quit at the first sign of difficulty. If you decide to move to a new city, you can't leave as soon as you find something you dislike. Indecisive people are impulsive people. And so you need to extend your time horizon, your commitment time horizon. Of course, if you don't have an out at all, then you'll never make a decision. And the reason it's so hard to be decisive in the first place is because you overanalyze opportunity costs and you also think that once you make a decision, it's set in stone. And this is where signal-driven decision-making comes into play. Basically, you make a decision. You're committed to that decision for the long term. You venture down that path and you only change if and only if you get a strong enough signal to do something else or change course. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're building a... Let's say you want to build a new business and you're stuck between building an e-commerce business and building an agency. Both options seem equally as interesting and exciting to you and you know that you can make money with either one. You've been thinking about this for months and you just can't make a decision. But let's say you you watch this video and you make a decision uh, because you've realized that the only way to move forward is by going forward. You're two years into it. It's going well. You've got more free time, you've systemized the business and yeah, life's good. You've built relationships with a bunch of other e-commerce guys and at least two of them have complained about their marketing performance over the last six months. Now you happen to have dealt with the same issue that they're dealing with and overcome it and you haven't had any issues with it since then because you've figured out a system that works and so on and so on and so forth. And then they ask you, well, could you help me do that? I'm happy to pay you. Now you've got signal. Now there's a, an opportunity to build an agency around this specific marketing system that you've built and leveraged. And you've got people who are asking about it. You've got your first customers. 
That is signal. When things like that come along, yes, you should give yourself permission to pursue them if it makes sense and if you want to do them. But notice how this has not come as a result of theorizing and thinking and procrastinating and analyzing. It's happened to come because you've built something, an e-commerce business, and you've overcome problems that other people have seen and respect you for. It has come as a result of taking action. It's important to distinguish though between signals and shiny objects. So there are things that will come along in your path while you're building something like a business that are strong signals like the one I just mentioned above. There are other things that are shiny objects and pretty much just a distraction that you should ignore. So some examples of strong signals are you get an offer to buy from someone to buy your business. That's a strong signal. You should consider it. You connect with a nine-figure entrepreneur who wants to partner with you on a new venture. You get a dream job offer in a new city that you've always wanted to move to. You spot a high leverage opportunity in your market based on your expertise and experience that most people are not seeing. Those are all strong signals. Examples of shiny objects might be that you read a blog post about an interesting new business model and you start feeling FOMO. Uh, You come across a good domain name for sale and start thinking about the business you could potentially build with it. Or you're feeling challenged or bored uh, business-wise, career-wise, and you start fantasizing about doing something else entirely instead of overcoming the challenge that's in front of you. Usually you'll know the difference intuitively between a shiny object and a signal, but it's important to keep this in mind and analyze these things for what they truly are. So to sum this video up, let me give you a simple formula for making decisions and taking action to move forward. Don't overthink this. The first step is to make the best decision in front of you. Ignore the rest. It should not take months to make decisions about this stuff. You should pick the high signal option. And if you're stuck between multiple options, flip a coin if you need to, just pick something, move forward. If you make a mistake, you've got time, you can always pick the other thing. Step two is to start taking action. You've made the decision, it's time to work. Take the necessary actions to move things forward and don't look back. The third step is to keep executing until and only if there's enough signal to do otherwise. If you've got strong signal or you've got a good opportunity that comes your way, then consider it. You'll know if it's worth pursuing. Step four, if you get no signal, then keep executing. Don't stop. You can't force signal. It comes to you when you're taking action and you put stuff out into the world. If you haven't got any signals yet, you haven't got good enough reasons to change course, then don't. Keep pushing. Keep working. See what happens. I hope you enjoyed this video. If anything, it's more of a note to myself as a recovering indecisive person. Uh, I highly recommend that you watch my video on overcoming bottlenecks and removing deficiencies. You can see that up here or here. Uh, Once you've made the decision and you're starting to take action, you will encounter bottlenecks. So it's important you know how to identify those and overcome them. Until next time, let's get it. Please like and subscribe. Comment below for the algorithm. Would love to grow this channel as fast as possible. Appreciate your help and I'll see you next time. Cheers.